Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I'm going to show you a wiring trick that will allow you to get free sound for a second locomotive that is paired with one that has a sound decoder. So, let's go ahead and get started. But before we go on, I want to remind you, hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Before we get started with the actual uh, project for today, I want to uh, mention one thing. Uh, a lot of folks were asking me about when the ESP wireless system would be available here in the United States. Well, I got an email uh, today from Ryan at Iron Planet Hobbies, and his web, uh, website is ironplanethobbies.com. When you go to his website, there's an option there to look for components or look for products by manufacturer. So if you do that and look up DCC Concepts, you will see that he now has the entire ESP wireless line, as well as a large number of other DCC Concepts products in stock. One thing I want to point out, they have a great package deal for the ESP wireless system that includes three transmitters and one receiver, exactly what I used for my uh, control panel setup uh, on the uh, Piedmont Southern. And you can get that for $142 and I believe 23 cents. So that's, a, that's an exceptional price, much less than it would cost you if you actually ordered it from DCC Concepts in England, because their price, I think, would be somewhere around $165. And for folks who say that that's very, very expensive, consider that a brand new F7A mainline uh, locomotive with sound from Walther's uh, sells for $209.98. And if you like uh, steam, they have their Russian Decapod. Uh, available with a wow sound decoder for a little over $400. So $142.23 comparatively is not a lot as far as I'm concerned. So keep that in mind. The price of everything is going up. I just got an email from the folks at TCS and all of their prices are going to be increasing by up to 20% as a result of all the cost increases due to shipping uh, from uh, outside the United States and inflation and other causes. Let's go ahead and I want to share with you a method that I uh, use to double up on sound in more than one locomotive. So let me go ahead, I'm going to zoom in down here on the workbench and we'll take a look at what I've got here. The locomotives that I'm going to be working with primarily today are these, uh, they're a, the old lifelike Proto 1000 F3 A and B units. And Walther still makes these, I believe, uh, under their Proto series locomotives. But at any rate, uh, they're readily available uh, on, on eBay, train shows, things of that nature. And these are a very good running uh, locomotive. And they're similar in many respects to a Stewart F unit. But what I want to show you today is a way where when you're running a pair of locomotives, such as an A and a B, uh, I'm going to show you how you can use a single sound decoder in one locomotive and just a plain mobile decoder in another, double up on speakers and get twice the amount of sound from one sound decoder. So that will greatly reduce your cost for uh, adding DCC sound to your locomotive fleet. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already done the actual uh, wiring to make this go faster. Now this is one of the locomotives with the original board still in it. So you can see it's uh, pre it's all wired up here with these little slip-on connectors that Lifelike uh, used and that uh, a lot of manufacturers continue to use now. And if you look close, you'll see that there is actually no uh, socket for a decoder. However, what they did here is on the board, and let me zoom in a little bit further. You can see here that on the board, uh, they have included little solder uh, tabs here, and they're indicated as pin one, pin four, five, six, seven, and eight. 
So you can take a decoder of any type and just uh, solder the wires, as shown, directly to these little contacts and install a standard decoder in the locomotive. Or you can do as I do, and I like to use the Economy plug-and-play decoders, uh, which you can swap out fairly easily here. Uh, there's a screw here and a screw here. You take those two screws out, and the board will pop right off. And then you can just slip these little uh, plastic connectors off, and the wires uh, from the truck, uh, the pickup wires, can be slipped off at this end. And these are your motor wires. And note here that the polarity of the motor wires are indicated on the board. So keep that straight. So in both cases, I uh, pulled out this board and replaced it with a piece of black styrene uh, to fit right in, in uh, that location so that I could mount my uh, decoder directly on the styrene. Now this is the A unit, so you can see all I've done is put in the piece of styrene here uh, in place of that board drilled a couple of holes and put the screws in and screwed it down into place. So it makes a really nice mount for the decoder. And then I just took my double-sided foam tape uh, from 3M and placed it on, on the underside of the decoder, slapped it down on the uh, piece of styrene, and I was ready to go. So that's a really quick and easy way to mount these. And then it's a simple matter to take the red and the black wires, hook them up to the circuit board, and uh, solder them in place. And then the, uh, motor uh, the motor contacts are right here, and the speaker contacts are right here. I showed you all of that in video number 50, so I'm not going to uh, you know, bore you with doing that all over again. And then here is my speaker located back here. And again, I just took a piece of, uh, of styrene and uh, placed it on top of the uh, chassis uh, and glued the uh, speaker. And this is an 11 by 15 millimeter uh, sugar cube speaker that I got uh, from Streamline Backshop. And again, I've used those in many, many uh, installations in the past. And um, I'll put a link to another video that I showed you on speakers and speaker connections and the like. So I've gone over in the past how to make these connections to the speakers, and uh, so I'm not going to bother you with that. So what are we going to talk about then? Well, there's a way that you can use two speakers. So I've got one here and another one here powered off of the same decoder. So this is the Soundtracks decoder here. This decoder back here is an older uh, Digitrax decoder. It's a DH150K. It's no longer made. It hasn't been made since 2002. But at one point, I bought a package deal from somebody on eBay. I think I got about six or seven of these. And they work fairly well because you can, yeah, you know, you can match them, uh, speed match them with the uh, Soundtracks decoder fairly easily. And you can get these to operate very well with each other. This one does not have sound, this one does. So how are we going to do this? Well, it's a very simple matter. But one thing to keep in mind, and I covered this in my video on speakers, is that you can wire speakers two different ways. You can wire speakers in series or in parallel. And if you wire these in series, then the, um, then the resistance adds up. So two 8-ohm speakers in series will give you 16 ohms. If you wire these in parallel, and I show you what I mean about series and parallel in the video on speaker installations, um, then the resistance is halved. So these are two 8-ohm speakers, and in series they would give you 16 ohms. In parallel, they would give you only 4 ohms. Now you might think that 4 would be better than 16, but it's not. You're much better off to run these with them in series, giving you the 16 ohm resistance combined. I won't get into the details of why that is. Suffice it to say, it's better for the amplifier in the uh, Soundtracks decoder to be pushing 16 ohms instead of only 4. That said, the Soundtracks decoders are very, very robust decoders. 
They have a two watt power output for their sound and they can easily drive anything from four ohms to 16 ohms. So you're covered either way. You're not gonna blow your sound output on your decoder by wiring these in series or in parallel. It's gonna work fine uh, with two speakers. And uh, if you go to the Soundtracks website in the reference material, they do have a, uh, a they do have a PDF write up on installing speakers where they go into this also. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to wire these in series. Now that has ramifications because it means if they're wired in series and you disconnect them, the wiring between them, they will not produce any sound because you break the circuit. It's sort of like the old Christmas lights where if one goes out, uh, it breaks the circuit and they all go out. And that's what happens if you separate the two locomotives and they're wired in series. So if you've got a pair of locomotives that you're going to be uh, periodically putting together and taking apart, you might want to consider using parallel wiring because that would allow this one to still produce sound even though it's disconnected from this speaker. So let me show you how I wired this up. I took the orange wire here and I connected it to one of the speaker outlets or one of the speaker contacts on the board. And I ran that orange wire back and connected it to one tab here on my speaker. And then I took another wire, another orange wire, and connected it to the other one. And that's run back to the other locomotive. And I'll show you the wiring harness that I used to do that in just a minute. Okay, this is the other locomotive. So you can see the orange wire coming in here and notice that it is going into the same side of the speaker. So I feed power from the decoder to this particular tab here on the solder tab on the left side of the speaker, out the right side, back to the second speaker here in the left side and then I'm going to take it out the right side. And for that, I've used this gray wire, and then that gray wire is run back to the locomotive, comes up here, and is run back to the other solder contact here on the board for the second speaker contact. So what I've done then is I've wired this circuit, these two speakers, in series so that I've got the orange wire coming back, going in the left side, coming out the right, going back to this one, going in the left and coming out the right to this gray wire. And then the gray wire is just returning, or is just the return loop of the circuit. So it goes down and out and back up right here in this locomotive, and then is con uh, connected here to the second solder tab right here for the speaker connection, completing the circuit. So when this locomotive is operating and the sound is turned on, you're going to get the same sounds in both locomotives. And remember, this is a 2-watt rated amplifier circuit. These each are rated at 0.8 watts. So that's going to give you what? Something like about 1.5, 1.6 watts here. So we're going to reduce the master volume accordingly. I actually cut the master volume down to about 110 so that I'm not going to overdrive these speakers. And that's going to be very, very good sound anyway because these things do have a lot of power and these uh, speakers put out a lot of sound. So how are we going to go about connecting these up? Well, for this, I use a TCS 4-pin micro connector uh, wiring harness. It's a 1475 from TCS. Uh, as you can see, it's just got this little connector with the four colored wires. So you've got a red, a black, and an orange and a gray wire, as I showed you here. And that allows you to make a, a, a connection that you can disconnect when you want to take these locomotives apart. What I've done then is, with the orange wire here and the gray wire here, I've just connected them, as I mentioned earlier, and then I have the same uh, orange wire here and gray wire here. So that's what makes the circuit and allows you to connect these together when you want to operate them on your model railroad. Now, here's the important thing to remember about this. In order to do this, you have to be able to connect these up like
like this, okay? And then you've got your connection made and your locomotive is going to run. The locomotives are going to run uh, and the sound is going to come out of both speakers. So you're going to get sound in both locomotives even though you only have one sound decoder. Now the important thing to remember is any time that you are messing around with this connection right here, you must do it on an unpowered track. Now why do I say that? It is very, very easy for this little connector to drop down and hit the track. And let me tell you, all it takes is a split second. One split second of inattention or distraction, and if this hits the rails, you've smoked your decoders. Another thing that can happen is, if you are putting these two harnesses together, and you get them slightly misaligned like this, you can put track power directly in to the amplifier circuit, and that will blow the decoder. How do I know this? I've done it twice, okay? It happened to me just the other day as I was doing this installation, and sure enough, I was putting it together, I just got distracted and looked away a second, and they connected. And one thing here is, the little metal sockets are right here uh, exposed on the surface of this connector. And all you have to do is touch it in the wrong way and it will smoke the decoder. And that's what happened to me. Another time, a couple of years ago, I was messing around and the connector hit the top of the rails. That blew the decoder. So, be very careful with this. Always, always, always turn your track power off when you are about to put these locomotives on the track and when you are making the connection. Once you've made the connection though, then you're good to go because it is insulated and it's going to be out of the way. I've used this on some older uh, Atlas FP7s. I think this one here dates to the 1970s. But at any rate, in these I've replaced the, the original motors with Mashima can motors, so it's very, uh, very efficient drives now. And it run, they run very, very nicely for locomotives that are that old. And again, this has the uh, Athern uh, DH150K uh, decoder in it and the um, Soundtracks Economy plug and play right here. And in this case, I've used these uh, color coded connectors like this. And they will pop right together and they are polarized so they're, no, they're not going to uh, make any electrical contact uh, before they're pushed together properly. So this wiring harness here is a little bit more resistant to that kind of problem than the other one from TCS because the pins are not exposed. So you're less likely to damage your locomotives. And in this case, I just ran these wires uh, out through the hole here, the window, in the back of the locomotive door there. And then I can connect them together and I'm ready to run and I'm getting sound in both uh, locomotives driven by the Soundtracks decoder. Now, for that particular installation, I used these uh, connectors here that I got off of eBay. And I got this several years ago, but I will look online and try to find uh, current production of these. They're very inexpensive and they work fairly well. They're not quite as flexible as this nice little TCS one, but they're less likely to uh, result, result in damage if you drop them on the track because the um, contacts are not exposed. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope that those uh, little wiring tricks that I've just shown you will be useful to you. But, you know, if you do try this out, no matter what scale you do it in, remember my warnings. Do not try to make these connections on a live track. Always turn the power off to your track when you're putting your locomotives on it and when you're making those connections to the wiring harness because all it takes is just a split second of inattention and you can blow a decoder. And like I said, I've got one on the way back to Soundtracks this week because that happened to me. So it's something that's very easy to do if you just get distracted for a second. Have a great week and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.